I think, um, yeah, in the um, before the 1989 uh, students' moment, the uh, revival among the house churches uh, pretty much uh, occurred uh, in the rural uh, countryside areas. Um, but after that, there is a massive revival among the Chinese intellectuals. Those um, Christians um, like uh, myself um, have um, been never really seeing any uh, such a big revival um, because uh, the students' uh, uh, moment, uh, actually uh, the massacre happened. And uh, there are millions and millions of Chinese intellectuals uh, came to Christian faith. And many of them were public intellectuals, as we call it, university professors, uh, students leaders, um, especially um, in the uh, lawyers field. Uh, and uh, many human rights campaigners uh, became uh, Christians. So uh, in that sense, uh, within the Christian community, I would say there are already a group of the Chinese um, um, intellectuals uh, who already uh, who are uh, both concerned about the um, uh, the faith and and the freedom, and after all, uh, the religious freedom is uh, the first freedom above uh, every other freedoms, uh, as President Bush repeatedly said, and I think um, right now in the Chinese uh, Christian community, um, there is a, a portion of the intellectuals uh, who are like uh, um, the best-selling uh, author, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the most well-known uh, human rights lawyers, and uh, even there are um, uh, private uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, there are um, uh, movie directors, uh, singers, uh, and uh, there are um, university uh, educators. Um, in every sector of Chinese uh, society now, there are um, house church Christians. Uh, so that's a, a very a phenomenal um, compared to what had happened in the past. I would say, um, although you know the, uh, the goal for religious freedom is the same for uh, all these uh, different groups, um, like the the um, those uh, Catholics who are loyal uh, to the Holy See and uh, uh, those um, Tibetans uh, who are fighting for their uh, freedom, the Uyghurs uh, also for their freedom. Um, yet, uh, because of the government, um, the the uh, severe crackdown. And, uh, and uh, restrictions on the uh, uh, communication and movement, um, and also the different tactics against uh, different groups. Um, there are not uh, much um, communication among uh, these groups inside China. Uh, of course, in overseas, um, we uh, are uh, in different groups uh, where we have more collaboration um, among different uh, faith uh, groups um, than inside China, because you know obviously we have more freedom here to communicate, to gather together, and to talk about common strategies. But inside China, uh, it's almost impossible uh, because uh, each group uh, even have a hard time to survive themselves. Uh, for instance, um, if uh, a house church pastor, you know, is uh, fighting. Um, for their own um, uh, freedom of gathering uh, in their own uh, area, had any uh, indication of a collaboration with the underground, you know, like uh, a Vatican appointed bishop, and uh, his or her crime would be 10 times more severe, um, you know, than if uh, he's uh, fighting um, for that one issue. And uh, if you join the um, cause for the Tibetan or Uyghurs, uh, my goodness, I mean, uh, the, the sentence, if he's caught, uh, would be 100 times more severe and more serious. And the Chinese government um, would label you as, uh, you know, be traitors or, or, uh, or damaging the uh, public security or the, the national security. 
and um, but we do uh, have been um, have been working with uh, the Chinese human rights lawyers uh, who are Christians. Uh, they, in their professional uh, level, uh, they uh, have been representing not only the Protestant uh, house church prisoners um, for their freedom, but also representing the uh, Tibetans, uh, the Uyghurs, and Falun Gong spiritual uh, movement uh, victims. Um, so uh, from the uh, conscience side, um, they chose to um, advance freedom for all. And so that's uh, the um, purpose of uh, our organization, China Aid, um, is to 